So you can see this is the start of a project I'm making for a friend who is going to be ordained a deacon in the Catholic Church and um, I'm going to make him a chalice and this chalice is going to have, um, it's going to be made mostly of oak and I'm going to put two sections of walnut in here so it'll have two stripes of walnut going through it. So you can see now I've put glue on both sides of the wood as I put each one together. And I have a pattern here. I, I probably should have had one of these darks running through the middle, but just it would have made it too wide. So I have clamps and what I've done is I clamp them just lightly and then I'm going to give this a little tap to kind of get everything situated as square as I can. Now some things I want you to notice, take a look at where the pressure points are. I have them kind of equidistant on both corners and then I'm going to crunch it in the center. And normally you would never, never clamp directly on to nice hard wood like this and put, put a footprint of the clamp there. But I don't really care because remember all this wood, I'm going to put this on a lathe and I don't really care because when it's on that lathe, all of the wood on the exterior here, including the glue drips, is going to be gone. It's going to be all laid the way in the process because the, the chalice itself is going to be on the interior of the wood. So if you can imagine a 3D image of that chalice floating in the center of this large block, that's what we're dealing with. So we don't have to worry so much about whether or not we have dents in the wood itself. So you can see here's my final glue up and uh, top of the chalice right there will give me a large circle. I might go a little bit inside the black line. Prior to making my cut on the lathe, you can see this surface here is uneven. And what I'll do is I'll take it on my bandsaw and shave it down nice and even. Okay, here we go. So now I have a nice flat edge on both sides. This I'm not going to worry about because we're going to cut it away. But after I put that circle there, I think I'm going to knock off the corners with my bandsaw to alleviate a lot of chipping away with the lathe. I'll show you that in a moment. So you can see this setup. I put my ripping fence here just to kind of support this edge. I have a bar clamp here to hold it and I don't have to be perfect but I don't want to cut into this circle area so I'm just going to nick this corner off and I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay, first corner cut complete. Well, this looks like a success. I'm outside of the circle. I've got a lot less stuff to chip away and now I can go over to the lathe and begin to do some rough work making it into a cylinder. So now that I've found the center point here, I used um, a corner square, lined it up with a circle and made arcs in the center. I'm going to take this, forget the name, pound it in good and tight, and set the whole thing up into the lathe. I'm going to start using this spindle gouge, a large one. I call it the hog because it really takes things off very quickly. And just because of its size, I don't get a lot of jerking around and stuff. So I'll go ahead and try that to start with at a fairly low RPM because this is still not balanced and it makes the lathe shake a little bit. I'm going to try a different tool. This is my old standby. I'll see how this one works. It's a much smaller spindle gouge. 
I'm starting to get a pretty good cylinder and it looks like what I need to do is I need to first knock off the corners with this small gouge and then I can go to the larger one that really does a good job. Take a look at how nicely this is cutting now. I have one of these Barracuda chucks and I need to chuck this up so what I've done is I have a basic idea of the size I want to get. I've locked that in here, that's the size, and now I'm going to take about the last maybe half inch of this and take it down to this diameter so I can chuck it up here. I'm going to use this easy wood lathe carbide tool uh, and slowly take off a little bit at a time on this end part to uh, make that uh, chucking area possible. Looking good. The top end of my chalice was not perfect and in order to kind of flatten it out I used this easy cutter and just ran it into here and took maybe an eighth of an inch off and what that does is it makes this lip 90 degrees to the base this material is going to be removed anyway so it doesn't matter so this is going to be my new lip and I know it's a, a good edge to use here I found this image online it's an old Scottish pewter communion chalice I like the dimensions of it so I can see that about half of it is the cup and then the rest of it is the stem and the base. I'm going to say well uh, maybe like right about here is the halfway point so I'm going to come down about that far with the chalice portion and then I'm looking at this again and I'm thinking uh, looks like about right here is where I'll come up with the base and remember I can't use all of this wood here so I'm gonna have to chop it off a little bit further in so I'll go around with the base right there and then in here I'll try to put some kind of a knob in this area here just that would make like a handhold right about in there so this gives me some basic outlines for what I'm doing and then I'll probably take this tool and just cut some guidelines there so I'm aware of where all these places are. So you can see here now I'm starting to grind away the side of the chalice but I better go ahead and take out the middle part. So I'm going to take this large three quarter inch drill bit and I want to go about that deep. So I'm going to mark it and then I can go ahead and get at least a starter hole that I can get some of my tools into and begin my cutting of the interior. So the tool that works best for me is this mid-size easy hollower number one. It's got a carbide circular blade. But the best thing, when I get it out here, you can see, is it has a balancing point right here. And you can put a good five inches inside of a bowl. So this will work really well for what I'm doing. You can see my shape isn't too close to the one I'm trying to copy but it's still coming out really nice and what I'm using primarily I've used a number of tools but I found I I get some jerking and pulling with a lot of tools so I'm using this inexpensive uh, just um, scraper and then I've been using this larger bowl scraper 
And then what works to remove a lot of materials is I have these two easy carbide tips. One, the round one, fits in here and does a pretty good job. And then on this one, I don't want to torque this thing and snap it off. So what I'm doing is taking about a oh an eighth of an inch at a time, shoving in, and I'm getting ready to make my ramp up for the base. So, so far, so good. You can see I put a block of wood here, a circular block of wood, and tied it in. Uh, and then I, I'm proceeding to sand this, and then I think I'm going to burn some lines here, here, and here as I finish up. And I've got it all sanded down pretty well, and uh, I'm ready now. Uh, I'm still trying to decide whether I should burn some lines in here. That looks dressy, but I have a lot going on here already. Take a look at the mess I made in the process of doing this. Look at the sawdust. It looks like uh, you've got a bushel of sawdust coming off of this. Um, lots of fun. Well, here's the finished product. I hope this makes a nice gift for my friend.